I'm John Rowland with Holland Park and today I'm going to show you how to adjust the setup gears on any of the bigger slab saws. Now this is an area that's uh, actually kind of critical to maintaining the life of the gears um, and I'll show you a couple of things as I go through this that will help you look at uh, uh, your old saw and assess what needs to be upgraded. Now the first thing I want to mention is uh, the way the gears work, uh, you have a mesh between the worm and, and, the, uh, and the worm gear, and we call it the ring because people remember more easily, but it's actually called a worm gear and a worm, technically. And for these to function properly, they need to be well lubricated and the mesh of the worm into the worm gear needs to be complete. Now if you see the teeth of the worm gear it's starting to get really rounded off, it doesn't mean that the worm is still good. Usually when they start getting rounded off it's time to replace both. Uh, sometimes sometimes if you replace you know a worn gear early enough you can extend the life of your, uh, your big gear. Uh, looking inside the saw, this bushing right here, that is the number one cause of gear failures is when people run a really old saw and you can grab this shaft and move it up and down um, because there's slop in that bushing, then it allows this, this when the shaft can move up or down, it allows the mesh of these teeth to, to get uh, wider and then you, you get abnormal wear. Now what we're gonna start with is um, just the simple concepts here. These four bearing, or four bolts holding the two bearings here, they have slop in them. So if you see, you get a lot of adjustment. And if you look at the gears here, you can see how much they move just with a little bit of movement here. So that's how you get your mesh on this end. Now then, when you look straight down on this, what you wanna see is when you're looking at your worm gear, the worm itself, that it's centered right over this shaft below it. So the center of this gear is over the center of the lower gear. Now the other thing is, this is affecting whether the big gear is running down the center line of this shaft. So what I do when I start, uh, is I will take these bolts over here and I'm going to snug them up a little bit and the reason being is when I snug them up it's going to pull the shaft back this way when it does that affects my center line so by taking these and saying okay I'm going to just snug them a little bit until I see my my lock washers compress doesn't have to be real tight I'm not going to tighten them enough that I'll spin the bolt head on the inside but I want to compress the, the lock washers and see that I'm, I'm getting the shaft fully over. And then I come back and I can look at my, my big gear. And what I'm really paying attention to here, now if you look down, you can see the wrench flat right down here. There's the wrench flat. So I'm going to move into position. I want to make sure that my set screw is on that wrench flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into this, this set screw, which is slightly a pain in the butt, but just use a long wrench and I'm going to walk it down until I'm touching the shaft. And then I'm going to do something that's kind of important here. When you're putting a screw onto a flat, you have to make sure that the, that the screw is coming down perfectly into the middle of that flat. And it's pretty easy to do if you uh, follow a couple little tricks here. As soon as I get this down, I'll show you. All right, so now I'm on the flat. So when I, if I look at this, Right now I'm loose and I can move the shaft inside and as I'm moving it, I'm tightening my Allen wrench a little bit until all that slop is, is out of there. Now, 
I can leave my shaft where it's sitting, move my gear back into position. And I'm sighting down the center of it. I really want to make sure it's centered good. I pay a little bit more attention to this because that affects how this worm is sitting down into the middle of the worm gear. It's a little bit more challenge doing this where I'm kind of trying to look through a camera. But uh, now I'm looking pretty good here. So I'll come back with my second screw and snug it up a little bit. On the bigger gears, there's two screws. Smaller gears usually only have one. Um, just because there isn't that much force on the gear, um, because it's driving a, a thread. It can generate a lot of power to push. Now what I do is when I get close, I get on here and I can crank that puppy down so I don't have to worry about it coming loose. And I'm not doing something awkward with my wrench because I'm just putting this little wrench on here and cranking it down. So now I got my lower gear adjusted, but now you can see I got a lot of slop here so now I got to close that slop up so I'm gonna go back I'm gonna loosen these four bolts a little bit I don't have to loosen them all the way I'm just gonna loosen them enough that the shaft can move and that's where my little rubber mallet comes in now the first thing I do is I tap my left one up and now on that I actually want to tighten that and I'm going to tighten it all the way and you'll notice I put a wrench on the inside I don't want that bolt to turn because that bolt has uh, some silicon on it and it keeps the oil from seeping out there and I don't want it loose on the inside the tank is threaded so now I still have my play but I have oh, got another thing to do here I'm gonna do which is I want to tighten my my bearing because I'm centered here now so I can tighten those up. Someone hand me the wrong ridge. Is that the wrong one? No, it's okay. I get these. I like aligning the the set screws together because it just looks neater. It looks more tidy. So now I got that, and now I have to just get my lash out. Now I got to tighten it up a little bit because it's bouncing back on me some. I may have to go back and loosen up that first one and bring it back up a little bit if I don't get enough out of this one. I'm not thinking. I don't have enough out of this one. It's close, but I'd like it a little bit better fit than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen it just a little because I don't want it just flopping around. I want to be able to move it. So I bumped this one up a little bit more, bumped this one down a little bit more. Now I'm pretty satisfied. I have 
very, very little movement. And the other thing I look for is the shaft will turn freely. If it feels like it's dragging a lot, then I have the gears meshed too tight. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna make sure that my four bolts are tight. And then I'm gonna talk about the last thing that is important to making your gears last a long time, which is the gear cover. Um, a lot, I don't know how many times I've seen old saws where somebody's taken the gear cover off, wadded a bunch of grease on it and hope that that's gonna keep the, the life of the gear sustained. The problem with grease is that the worm and the worm gear just push the grease out of the way. So if it's running for 20, 30 minutes, yeah, maybe it's got some grease on it. After a while, it, it's not running fast enough where it keeps the action and the grease moving. So what we found is that by going to an 80 weight or 90 weight gear oil and then putting the, you know, this is the original style Highland Park uh, gear cover, put that on, we put a, we lay a bead of silicon, that uh, Permatex Ultra Black around here and screw this puppy on and then we fill it up to about right here with the 80 weight because we don't want it seeping into our tank but if you have that much, this, the teeth on this gear pick it up. It gives a steady supply of, of oil, fresh oil to this, and your gear life is a lot longer. That's it. That's all there is on worms and worm gears.